Hey, what's up guys? This is Afar from CCI in 8 weeks. In this video, I want to discuss the state of the network engineering career. Look at the driving factors that are changing the landscape and finally how you can transition your career and avoid seeing your job getting automated. Be right back. So one way to understand how this career transition is going to play out is to look at the system admin to DevOps job transition. So DevOps picked up steam about 10 years ago, but system administration jobs are still around. Now, if you dig deeper, you will find that most system, system admin jobs desire DevOps knowledge today. Secondly, entry-level system admin jobs earn about half of what an entry-level DevOps can make. So what am I talking about? We may still have vanilla network engineering jobs five years from now, but do expect them to include automation skills as something highly desired and expect your earning potential to be cut in half. I think you get the idea. So if we vertically dissect network engineering areas, then there is design and architecture, right? Implementation, which is basically getting things done, whether these are incremental changes or building a network from scratch, and then operations, right? Where you work in the, in the NOC, for example, or you are in charge of the operations. Another way to slice and dice network engineering roles is by domains of knowledge, like routing, switching, data center, or security, etc. Or you can also slice and dice them using the enterprise versus SP, transport versus backbone, you know, networking equipment versus IT desktop. Now, before we discuss the new network engineering 2.0 roles, it is super important to look at the actual factors driving this transformation. So in my opinion, there are five disruptive forces and those are automation, the device APIs, et cetera, virtualized infrastructure, the cloud, obviously, the software tooling as in DevOps, and finally, the need for reliability or monitoring. Those five disruptors help us deliver on the crucial network KPIs like capital expenditure or CAPEX, operational um, expenditure or OPEX, time to market, and the availability or network uptime. As you can notice, some factors check off one of the KPIs and some multiple KPIs at the same time. Now, the disruptive forces we discussed have created the new network engineering roles that are either automation focused or cloud focused or software or reliability focused, right? So the most well-known and most talked about role is the network automation engineer role. This role could be focused on plain routing and switching or data center um, or, uh, or the security domains, right? So as an NAE or network automation engineer, your job primarily is to help implement the automation task using your deep understanding of networking protocols and vendor technologies, um, you know, using Python and configuration man management tools such as the Ansible. I consider NAE a starting point in network automation career uh, journey. The next level beyond that is the network DevOps or the Net DevOps. As Net DevOps, you're expected to be able to design, implement, and operate network automation. This role required that you are a seasoned DevOps. Now, more on this later. The next up is cloud network or infrastructure engineer, and that's yet another offshoot of the traditional network engineer role focused on cloud-based infrastructure. So it is about implementing network services within a VPC and configuring hybrid connectivity, right? 
that could be for private or public cloud. Yet another role is configuring SDN and VNFs, i.e. managing SP or telco networks via SDN controllers and deploying virtualized network functions within the, the VMs or containers using the OpenStack. Finally, we have reliability or availability focused roles such as the network reliability engineer or NRE, which is like SRE but network oriented also known as sometime network SRE if you look at the job postings. Now moving forward, let's see how the disruptive forces intersect with the five network engineering roles we just discussed. So automation, obviously you have NAE and same for net DevOps. For cloud, you have obviously applies to NAE to some extent, but more so obviously to cloud engineer role and SDN NFE, private or public. Virtualized infrastructure applies to obviously all of these roles because that underpins uh, a whole lot of the, the agility that you can actually build into the network. And then you have DevOps tools, which pretty much apply to everything, right? Even to the SDN and VNF engineer, but not as much as they do to NAE and Net DevOps. Then you have reliability tools, the cloud engineer obviously apply to and then more so on the NRE front. Let's now deep dive into each of the five roles we discussed. So software tooling such as DevOps knowledge is relevant to most new roles, whereas reliability or monitoring tools, whether related to a cloud provider such as AWS or a third party such as Splunk or New Relic are mostly relevant to cloud en engineer and NRE roles. And you can see the earning potential of an NAE, for example, right? So it starts off with this and then you work your way up, right? You can obviously add the desired stuff like you can be a seasoned DevOps that would just make you a, maybe a senior network automation engineer, but that's not, uh, that's not required as such. If you know enough, which is Ansible and Git, you can get by. Now for network DevOps, in my opinion, the, the NAE makes the best way to get started with network automation as a network engineer, because you already know the most fundamental skills required, such as the knowledge of networking protocols and vendor technologies. You just need to add some knowledge of DevOps tools, such as Git and Sibyl along with coding in Python. No, you don't have to become a software developer, but you need to know REST APIs, fundamentals, of software development and application deployment and security. NAE is also a step up from an earning potential point of view, as we just discussed. Uh, so you should be able to take home a six figure salary. Now, coming back to Net DevOps. Net DevOps is kind of a senior or a seasoned NAE or a DevOps who knows a lot about networking technology. So you are expected to know your networking protocols, vendor technologies, um, Linux, Python, obviously, and DevOps tools. So Net DevOps role is obviously a step up from NAE and guarantees you a six figure salary anywhere in the US based on uh, my uh, research into the, the job postings. Cloud engineer is a cloud focused network engineer role. So you are expected to know your cloud APIs, right? And cloud vendor infrastructure uh, provisioning tools. Um, it also offers great earning potential, much like a net DevOps role, as you can see. VNF engineer is more of a telco focused role. So you are expected to know your networking protocols, along with know-how of vendor VNFs such as Cisco or Ericsson, and knowledge of private cloud infrastructure such as OpenStack and various SDN controller APIs. NRE is a specialized form of net DevOps where your KPI is really network availability or uptime. You're expected to possess obviously net devs, DevOps skills with a special focus on monitoring tools and testing strategies to harness the well-known chaos engineering principles. 
it also has great earning potential. Now, let me summarize roles and the bodies of knowledge that we discussed so far. So if you look at this, if you start as network engineer and you add automation and some net DevOps, you arrive at NAE. If you are a network engineer, you add automation, you add all of the net DevOps, the DevOps tools, then you arrive at net DevOps. Likewise, if you're a network engineer, you add um, some automation skills and you also add some DevOps and some cloud infrastructure, then you can target cloud network engineer role. Um, and going forward like that, OpenStack obviously is crucial. And then you can um, arrive at ST and VNF engineer role. Um, likewise, network engineer, you can add automation, DevOps, and then monitoring tools and, and target NRE. Interesting way to look at also it, this whole stack is that you can also start as a network, uh, the software engineer rather, and then or a DevOps, and then work your way into this by adding networking, right, knowledge, and then uh, target any of these roles, right? So that's also possible. Not only you can transition into these roles from being a network engineer, but also uh, from a software engineering or DevOps background. So the pink elephant in the room is how do you transition your career? Let me show you a roadmap for each of the roles that we discussed. So for NAE, you can start with the DevNet Associate exam, then work your way up to Dev Core and one of the four exams, depending on the type of NAE you are interested in, right? So for enterprise, you want to target the enterprise automation. So you should target DevAsk, DevCore, and NAuto exams in that sequence. Now, if you are a high achiever, you may want to add DevOps exam as well, right? So that's about $1,000, but it gives you a path to a much higher earning potential and, and long-term um, job prospects. For net DevOps, you can follow the same roadmap as NAE, but the DevOps exam is a must have for this level. You can also add some other exam from Red Hat or DevOps Institute, right? But that's the net DevOps path. Think of that as a senior network automation engineer or someone who has a lot of DevOps skills and they happen to know networking as well. And obviously it comes with great earning potential much more than NAE. So beyond that, you want to choose obviously um, you can start in this role, you can start as DevOps ask, but beyond that, obviously you need to pick your provider. So AWS, this path, GCP, this path, Microsoft Azure, obviously a different path. So not a whole lot of uh, investment into your career, but there is a great potential outcome that you can. But what I would suggest um, is that you follow a path like where you are, where you're very well aware of the building blocks in your learning journey. For SDN or VNF engineer, I would suggest you start with the CCNA and then work your way up with Red Hat, OpenStack, certs, and then STN knowledge base based with ONF, OCSA exam. So CCNA, one of these or both of them, and then something like that, and then you arrive at this. Obviously, that doesn't guarantee that you're going to be a seasoned SDN VNF engineer by the time you're done with these exams. It's just that it gives you a, a very uh, organized way uh, to learn and pick all those no bodies of knowledge that you need to be a, um, a SD SDN VNF engineer. Now, for NRE, much like Net DevOps, you should target DevAsk, DevCore, and DevOps uh, exams this and this um, and then add AWS or GCP um, system operations focused exams such as AWS SysOps exam. We covered quite a bit of stuff here. So let me summarize. Network engineer role is transitioning to automation or cloud focused roles. You may still find a network engineering jobs five years from now, but if you don't take an action today, your earning potential may get, get cut in half. The most obvious path to transition your career out of a network engineering role is to target the network automation engineer role or NAE role by incrementally learning automation, 
uh, coding and DevOps tooling. Secondly, push yourself to master DevOps technologies and tools and transition yourself to either a net DevOps or an NRE role as the second step after that, after the NAE. If you follow the roadmaps I shared between CCIE Networks and Full Stack Networker websites, we offer prep material for all of the Cisco exams mentioned. Alternatively, you can also put together a self-study learning plan for yourself. Now, regardless of your approach, if you take one thing away from this entire discussion, it is to take an action and work on transitioning your career now. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.